Greetings, this is J. Peter Berzizi, and this demo is from my Exchange 2010 Backup and Recovery course. It's about best practice when it comes to your database and transaction logs. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are on Drek Typical, and for starters, let's just take a look at our computer management tool under Disk Management, just to show you that here we have our C drive. And when we installed Exchange, we installed it to C. So everything is on C, including the database, the transaction logs, everything's on the C drive. But here you'll notice we have two additional volumes. We have an M volume and an R volume. Now, ultimately, these could be additional disks that you have in the system. These could be attached disks in terms of a RAID array. However, you have your server set up. In our case, we're dealing with a virtual server. These are two VHD files, virtual disks, that we have set up and we've named the first one M and that's for mirror which is where we're going to put our transaction logs and the second one is R and that's for RAID 5 and that's where we're going to put our database. So these two are empty, there's nothing going on in there and we're going to now divide our database to one side and our transaction logs to the other. Remember they're currently residing on C. Now if we look at where they're currently residing you can see you can follow the whole path through program files and then Microsoft Exchange Server v14 mailbox and we've got this one called MB database. Now initially a database is named and numbered something along the lines of mailbox database and then there's a number after it. In our case we actually changed that so that we would have this database here be our main database with all of the various mailboxes inside of it. I just prefer to use mailbox databases that I can name instead of going with these numbered ones. But this one is still here. We haven't removed it, but this is the one that we're using. So here you can see all the things we talked about when it came to storage and the storage architecture. We have our existing log that is one megabyte in size. And when that log is actually filled up, it will be renamed as something else. And you can see the logs just grow and grow and grow. At the same time, if we move up here, you can see the checkpoint file here. And if we move down, here is the database itself, mbdatabase.edb. So it's all in one spot and it's all on the C drive. Definitely not best practice. What we want to do is we want to move the database to the R drive. We want to move our transaction logs to the M drive. Now the way to do that, through the Exchange Management Console, and you can use the Exchange Management Shell as well. It's just easier to do through the console here. Under Organization Configuration, we have the Mailbox node. Here we see the MB database. If you just right click on it and choose Move Database Path, you'll notice that it gives you the option to move the path off of C to something else. So here we recall we're going to move the MB database. To the R drive. And we're going to move the MB database transaction logs to the M drive. And the only thing you'll notice here is that we see it says MB database. That's actually the folder path. We're actually going to add a folder path in here as well. And we'll click move. And the reason we added that folder in is because the exchange database file cannot be placed at the root of any drive, so it has to be in a folder, and that's just a rule. So make sure you put in a folder name. If not, it'll just give you an error message, and you can go back and add in the folder. Now here it says, in order to perform the operation, it has to temporarily dismount the MB database. We say, okay, that's fine. We say yes to all. And there we go, it's complete. We click finish. It refreshes the screen, it shows us that it's mounted again. And here, if we now go into the information here, look, you see things have changed and all of our stuff is gone. Well, okay, let's just take a look at where it went. If we go to the M drive, here we see the MB database, there's those logs. It moved those over, we go over here, MB database, and there's our database file. Now we're following best practices. We have this database on a virtual RAID, which is running as volume R. And we have our transaction logs on a virtual mirror, which is running as M. And so obviously in every situation you might have that different, it might be different drive letters and so on. But now 
we have everything off of the system drive and the drive where exchange is installed and we have these on two separate drives. In the event this database needed to be restored from a backup because let's say it was corrupt or the disk failed or whatever, the transaction logs from the other disk would allow themselves to be replayed into the newly restored database and you're as up to date as the last transaction log that came in. So that's really best practice for your recovery is to separate those two. And so hopefully this showed a very simple way to do that. So now let's talk a little bit about deleted item retention times. Let's go back over to our exchange management console. And if we right click on the database itself and go to properties, and then if we take a look at limits, you can see here the deletion settings for that database and it's established on a database by database limit. So you can have databases have different deleted retention times. In this case, the keep deleted items for days, the default is 14 and keep deleted mailboxes for days is 30. And you can say don't permanently delete items until the database has been backed up. So that's actually something you might want to turn on if you're concerned that items will be deleted before a backup. Now, why would that take place? Well, it depends on when you do backups. If you're not doing regular backups, then those items might be deleted permanently and perhaps there's never been a record of them in the backup. So you can select this little checkbox to assist you in that. Oftentimes, however, you have a daily backup or hopefully a daily backup and that will prevent the need for this checkbox to be selected at all because you will get a backup of all of the items. So now that you can see the deleted retention times, let's focus on the first one, the deleted items. So 14 days, a user can delete an item and delete it even from their deleted items folder. It's gone. And they can still bring it back to life. Now maybe you've heard of this, but you haven't seen it in action before. Well, that's okay. You can't know everything. So let's jump over to our client system and let's just show you how this would work for a user that deletes something permanently from their deleted items. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.